Assalamu alaikum. Today's video is going to be about the Messiah, Ahmed, as well as Jesus, the son of Mary, and Muhammad, who are both messengers. We need to explain and discuss the differences between prophets, messengers, and the Messiah. So we are going to look into context. So you'll be able to have a better understanding on the whole matter together. This is basic fundamental Islam. If you are a revert, this is going to be essential knowledge. If you are a convert, this is essential knowledge. Um, for all humans, this will be essential. Chapter 7, verse 157 is going to set the stage. As you can see, I've color coded these things to be able to compartmentalize your thoughts better. Um, those who follow the messenger, notice that I've placed this in green so you'll be able to see that this is a message, but this messenger is the unlettered prophet whom you find mentioned in your own scriptures. What are your own scriptures? This will be two scriptures. This is the Torah, which we would know to be known as the law. <laughs> You'll see it translated as the law and the Injil, which is going to be known as the Gospels. So we are going to see a description of this person in the Torah as well as the Gospels. So I want you to remember that, place that thought in the back of your mind. That is an essential point. That is an essential point. Now, what is this man to do? For he commands them what is just. I'm sorry for my old ringer. He commands them what is just and forbids them what is evil. So he is going to forbid them the forbidden things. And he allows them as lawful. What is good? Now we are speaking about food and prohibits what is bad. So we're still speaking about these things. He releases them for their heavy burdens. If you remember in previous videos, this is about being deaf, dumb, and blind. The burden that Allah has placed on them and from their iron college. So this is going to be allegorical and this is going to be literal that he is to release the prisoners from the prison house as seen in Isaiah 42. Please reference that in my other video on the unlettered prophet. <clears throat> so notice that I'm changing colors so you'll be able to place these different things in sections inside of your brain for more afterthought. You must believe in him, honor him, help him, and follow the light which is set down with him. Just remember, you see, I, I told you guys when I hear like a when my phone goes off, when I say something deep, we're gonna we like that. We like that. All right. <clears throat> which is sit down with him it is they who will prosper all right now this is what this prophet is instructed to say oh men I have sent unto you all so notice that he does, he's not sent to a particular group of people. He's not sent to a particular group of people. As the messenger of Allah, to whom belongs the dominions of the heavens and the earth. There is no God but he. It is he that giveth both for light and death. Uh, 
so believe in Allah and his messenger. <clears throat> Follow and believe. The unlettered prophet. What does he do? He believes in Allah and his words. Interesting. So it would almost it would almost seem that the unlettered prophet is amongst the believers. Remember the word unlettered is means that you are not schooled. If you speak, if you look at colleges, you'll see that your humanities department, your arts department, you'll see the book of letters. So to be lettered means to be formally educated. Uh, you will see that translators will translate it to mean illiterate. This is not an accurate description of Umiyun. Umiyun can be accurately described as someone who is not formally taught. Someone who is not formally taught. So now what we need to do is to draw a comparison so you'll see that the Dabatar art or the creature of the earth is the same individual that we are speaking of. And when the words befalls them, we will bring forth for them, a creature from the earth speaking to them. That the people were of our signs not certain. So this is a creature speaking to the people about uncertain signs. Chapter 2, verse 151. A similar favor have you already received. In that we have sent among you a messenger of your own. So what is he doing? Rehearsing to you our sign. We have the same situation. Please remember that I go in revelation order. I do not go in the order that it is placed in the Quran. The order that it is in place in the Quran is from, from the largest books to the shortest books. Allah did not reveal his message in this sequence. in sanctifying you. To sanctify something is to purify something and instruct you in the book and wisdom and in new knowledge. Interestingly enough, it is understood by popular belief that Muslims that this uh, hikmah, right? is speaking of the sunnah, but interestingly enough, the words of Muhammad, the hadith of Muhammad, the statement, are going to be knowledge from Angel Gabriel. So this would not be his hikmah. They ask him questions, but he is not bestowed with this. He has an angel that gives him answers. When they ask Muhammad, who is Allah, he goes to Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel comes back three days later with Surah al So I want you to place these things 
in perspective. I need the people that learn from me to have a encompassing view of this book of Revelation and how it is coming about and to take what is said staunchly and stringently. That we have someone that is to teach the book wisdom and new knowledge. Now, notice how chapter 2, verse 285 is going to correlate with chapter 7, verse 158. Hence the purpose. The messenger believed in what had been revealed to him from his Lord. Who believed in Allah in his word. Do you see? The correlation. So interestingly enough, how is it possible for Muhammad to believe in the Torah and he never read it a day in his life? How can Muhammad saw alayhi wa sallam? It's my tongue twisted. So I just was peaceful upon it and always just, how can Muhammad be this individual when Muhammad never read it? The messenger believes in what was revealed to him, comma, as do the men of faith. Each one of them believe in Allah, his angels, his books, and his messenger. It's an impossibility for Muhammad to believe in books he is not read. He can believe in messengers, for sure. But how can he believe in the Torah and the Injil and he's never read these books? Would this not be a lie? We make no distinction between one and another of his messenger. And they say, we hear and we obey. Thy forgiveness, O Lord, and to them, and to thee, is the end of all journeys. Does it not make sense to you? How can you say that Muhammad is saying, is speaking of anything of the Torah? How can Muhammad say anything of the Torah? He's never read the Torah. Zaid ibn Thabit is going to be responsible for translating Hebrew. The Zaid is going to be responsible for translating Hebrew. So. We have to make this make sense. We have to make it make sense. How can Muhammad instruct them in the book that he's never read? And in new knowledge. And in wisdom. So what we need to see in chapter 3, verse 45, is going to set the stage for the understanding of the Messiah or the Messiah. The understanding of the Messiah or the Messiah. In chapter 3, verse 45, is where we start to have people get confused. When the angel said, Oh, Mary. Indeed, Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him. His name, the Messiah, comma. I highlighted it in order to help you separate the thoughts because in Arabic, they do not have punctuation. Jesus, the son of Mary, Honor in the world and the hereafter. And among those brought me. And wah. He will speak to the people in the cradle and maturity and be of the righteous. This is Jesus. 
This is his mother. My Lord, how can I have a boy when no man has touched me? And now we know that Jesus is not teaching the Injil. The Injil confirms what of Jesus is not teaching the Torah. Jesus is teaching the Injil, which confirms the Torah that was before him. And he will teach him. But notice it says Allah will teach him. It says that Jesus will speak. This man is going to teach. There's a difference between a warner and the Messiah. The Messiah is a teacher. Jesus is a warner. He is a messenger. The messengers are but warners. The Messiah is a teacher. We must understand that we have different words being used. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, he is known as the teacher of righteousness. All of the prophets, none of the prophets were teachers. They were warners. They were prophets. They were messengers. They warned these people. They didn't teach these people. It's a difference. And make him a messenger to the children of Israel. Indeed, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord and that I create for you from clay the form of a bird, then breathe into it and it becomes a bird by the permission of Allah. This has never happened. I cure the blind and the leper, and I give life to the dead by permission of Allah. These are things that Jesus did do. He never did a bird. Now this is something different. And I inform you of what you eat. Jesus is not informing anyone about a diet. But do you remember that chapter 7 verse 157 is going to speak of an individual that is going to correct your diet? Now do we start seeing that a, there's a difference between a teacher and a speaker? There's a difference between a messenger and the Messiah. So the Messiah is a prophet, a messenger, and the Messiah. Three levels of situation. But interestingly enough, and what you store in your houses. Indeed, this is a sign if you are believers. And confirming what is before me of the Torah. And to make lawful. How can Muhammad did not confirm what was before him of the Torah? And Jesus did not make anything lawful to you of some what was forbidden to you. Jesus did not change anything. And I've come to you with a sign from your Lord. So fear Allah and obey me. Now it is again. In case you forgot. In the same chapter. Allah did confer a great favor on the believers when he sent among them a messenger from amongst themselves. What is he doing? Rehearses and rehearsing from them the signs of Allah. I hope you understand that this is the Quran. Purifying them. 
what is you know that the word signs in Arabic is ayati versus signs revelations. You wish you had a forehead this big. You just hit the temple, and be like, mm. puzzling, indubitably. All right, sanctifying them. And now what is he doing again? He is instructing them in the book and wisdom. But we already said he's rehearsing to them. While before they had been in manifest error, remember that it said that he is teaching them things that they did not know before. Remember, it was new knowledge, but he is the unlettered prophet Unlettered means what? They do not know and they only follow through assumptions. Chapter 2, verse 78. We need Allah's definition, not other people's definition. Umiyun means this to him. Now, interestingly enough, these are the verses for us to see that this is all the same individual. But here, we are going to start to be able to differentiate between Messiah, messenger, and prophet. And in their saying, indeed, we killed the Messiah, comma, Jesus, the son of Mary. What is he? The messenger of Allah. Distinction. Messiah is more than this. Or why wouldn't he just say, he would say the messengers. But they did not kill him. This was so you would not be confused. Why would we give Jesus three titles? The Messiah, the son of Mary, and the messenger of Allah? Like, come on. It is saying that the Messiah, comma, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him. And that's the, that's dealing with the Messiah. And they did not crucify him. You need to think of the Quran is for now and then. The Quran was a was a book for their time, and the Quran was a book for the future for the Messiah, because remember it is said that we sent a light down on him. So this light that is sent down on him is what illuminates the book. Remember that Prophet Muhammad is the seal. A seal is a covering. The Messiah is the light. It said we follow the light that is sent down upon him. They did not crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. That's the situation that happened. They don't believe. Do you understand? It said they thought that they crucified him. This is the idea that people have. They don't believe that they killed Jesus. They believe that he was crucified. You know this, right? They don't. They, they say that he was crucified. These are two different ways to die. And why would God be redundant? Would he not just say they say that they have killed Jesus? But this is not what it said. Allah says that, look. I did not crucify, you did not crucify him, but another was made to take his place, period. And indeed, those who differ over it are in doubt over it. Do you remember that it just said that chapter three, verse 164 says that this individual is coming when people are in manifest error. So therefore they already know that if he's an unlettered prophet and the definition of unlettered is people that only follow assumptions. And they just said that people were in manifest error before the Messiah comes because they only follow what? Assumptions. So now we have a situation where Allah says that anybody that is in doubt over this matter is only those that are following assumptions. So the only person that is going to know about this matter is who Allah has inspired, which would be the Messiah in order to teach you. Because these other prophets are speaking and the Messiah is up in here teaching. Clearly. It's a difference. 
So it was a part of the it was a part of the plot. All of these other people are warning you, hey, hey, get your act together. Hey, get your act together. Now, since you ain't got your act together, the Messiah here to teach you. This that Isaiah 53, that he is the travail of his soul. He will see. He will be satisfied when he sees the work of his soul. That his soul will be a reputation. He, he will make trans, he will make intercession for the transgressors, and his 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 name will be up high. But notice that it says, and they did not kill him for certain. So what do you mean? You think that this is some cryptic message to say that they took Jesus up in the sky? Absolutely not. Why? Because the next verse says, no, Allah raised him onto himself and Allah exalted in power and wise. This is why people are confused because they believe that that is in reference to one individual. If you look at it, you're going to automatically assume saying, no, they didn't kill Jesus. They raised him. No, they did not kill the Messiah. They did not crucify Jesus. Another man took his place. No, he was raised. And now you come in here with the power fist. And none, none of the people of the book believed him before his death. Why would God contradict himself? They just said he didn't die, but now he just said he's got a death. So this is what, what, excuse me? I said, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. Your Honor, I move for court to dismiss this case. Right now. Did you not hear me? Right now. You said what? You told me that Jesus was raised up to God. They said that he wasn't crucified and that someone took his place and he was raised. And then it said that nobody believed him of the people of the book before his death. They just said that the Messiah didn't die. Oh, because you think that Jesus is coming back. Make it make sense, pimp. And on the day of judgment, he will be a witness against them. That's, he said, on the day of, on the who? On the day of judgment. On the day of judgment. On Yama Piyam. On the day of reckoning. On the day that the debts are due. It said on that day. Did it say he was coming back to earth? Absolutely not. It said on the day of judgment, he will be a witness before them. And if none of them believed in him before the death and they said, surely we did not kill him. How many times did they say it? Um, it said we did not kill him once. And then it says that we did not kill him twice. It says it again twice. We did not kill him for certain. And then it directly says nobody believed in him for his death. But we know that Jesus, every man must touch death. Jesus died when they took him to heaven. It said he was raised up onto himself. Oh, people of the book, do not commit excess in your religion and say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, comma, the son of Mary, a messenger of Allah. Do you notice that Allah goes out of his way to show that, show the distinction between the Messiah and Jesus? But these people just think that it's just these these redundant statements. Why would we say Jesus, the son of Mary, a messenger of Allah? Why would you say the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, a messenger of Allah? How much, what is this? What is this? Are we just unrolling the red carpet out? Like Jesus, he has one name. He has one title and he is one thing. Jesus is a messenger. His title is the son of Mary. His name is Jesus. And guess what's the difference between him and the Messiah? The Messiah's name is Ahmed. The Messiah is the unlettered prophet. The Messiah is a messenger. And the Messiah is a teacher while he is a speaker. It's a difference. Excuse me, said he was speaking from the cradle to maturity. It's the Judeo-Christian influence that just creeps into Islam like a slow disease. It just eats away at you. Next thing you know, you out here speaking Paul's words up in Islam. 
hypocrisy. And it says what? His word that was conveyed to him. So this is the second time this word was used. So in chapter three, verse 45, the word word was used is a word that the word of the Messiah was used. So in the back of your mind, remember chapter three, verse 45. Remember chapter four, verse 171. And then you go and give them a power fist with 61 and six. 61 and six say what? That a messenger is coming with good tidings and his name is Ahmed. But they said he was coming with a word. And the word was the name of the Messiah, which was a good tiding that was given to Mary in chapter three, verse 45. It is time to be surgical with this. In the words of the Hebrew Israelites, we got to bring it out, brother. So believe in Allah and his messengers, plural. We got a plural. Didn't say it's not one, it's plural. And do not say three. This is the Trinity. So do not say that there is a father, a son, and a Holy Ghost. Desist, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one. Exalted is he above having a son. To him belongs indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he above having a son. Says it twice. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. And whatever is on the earth, sufficient Allah is disposer of affairs. Never would the Messiah disdain to be a slave of Allah. Why would we have Jesus, the son of Mary? And then it say Jesus, the son of, why would it say the Messiah, comma, the Jesus, the son of Mary, and then say a messenger of Allah, and then only say Messiah by itself? Why is, what is the significance? Because the Messiah is higher than a messenger. I mean, it says that he cannot die. And the angels and the ones who are near. Did you not remember that it just said that Jesus was going to be among those that were brought near? What you, what you mean, Lisa? It said that he was among those that was brought near. It said that Jesus was going to be amongst those that were brought near. Did you did you not read that? It says Jesus will be amongst those that is brought near. Chapter three, verse forty five. Honored in the world and hereafter and among those that are brought near. So how do we add chapter three, verse 45, and then read chapter four, verse 172? How can the Messiah be among those that are brought near when we have a clear distinction between him and those that are brought near as though he is higher than those? You do know that the definition of Ahmed is the most praised one, the most praised one, the most praised one. Never would the Messiah disdain to be a slave of God, comma, and not the angels and the ones that are brought near. It just said that Jesus was among those that were brought near. Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, is among those that are brought near. The Messiah ain't that. Messiah higher. Clearly, it says it what? The Messiah, the slave of God, boom. And then it says the angels. And then it says the ones that are brought near. If you read the Gospel of Barnabas, that's the exact, that is the exact order that we are brought back to life on the day of judgment that is the messiah first and then messiah is going to and then the rest of the angels are going to be brought up to life and then the elect ones of god oh people of the book there has come to you our messenger revealing to you much of what you used to hide in the book remember it was what they did not know did muhammad ever reveal anything that was revealed that they were hiding in the book Muhammad never, never read the Torah. So how is this? We talking about a Torah follower again? Not a Torah man again. Passing over much. Notice that parenthesis. I've been meaning to take that parenthesis out. There have come to you from Allah a light and a perspicious book. Oh, people of the book. It tells them again. Here I come to you to make things clear to you, our messenger, after a break in the series of messengers. 
Remember that Muhammad is a seal. Muhammad is a cover. They told you I'm covering it up. And then he said, I'm coming through with the light. I'm going to make it dark and then I'm coming through with the light. And then with this darkness, I'm going to make it light. And the one that brings the light is going to come from darkness. At least you say there has not come to us no warner of glad, no warner of glad tidings. Remember what a messenger, remember I told you, or a warner. There have come onto you a bringer of glad tidings and a warner. It's a messenger. And Allah, did you not remember? He said, instructing you. Somebody instructed something different. Chapter 5, verse 72. And they have certainly disbelieved, saying that Allah is the Messiah, comma, the son of Mary. Notice that they only just refer to him, the title. While the Messiah has said. Remember that the Messiah is someone to the children of Israel. And notice that they said that none of the children of Israel believed in Jesus, the son of Mary, before his death. So the Messiah says what? Worship Allah and my, my Lord and your Lord. Indeed, he associates others with Allah. Allah has forbidden him from paradise and his refuge is the fire. And there is not for the wrongdoers any helpers. Chapter 5, verse 75. The son of Mary is not the Messiah, but a messenger. Notice it just says this. Ma el Masihu ibnu Maryam wa illa rasulin. This is literally what it said. They don't want you, the translator, the first time I translated it to the Messiah is not the son of Mary, but I understood that the subject matter of the sentence is the son of Mary and the subject matter is not the Messiah, but rather we are saying what the son of Mary is not. Ma. But a messenger, certainly the messengers have passed on before him. The messengers have passed on before him. We need to understand that the Messiah is clearly not just a messenger. He is a messenger. He is a prophet, but he is not just this. He is a teacher. He is a warner. He is a good tidings. So there are various levels of these things. There are various levels of these things. And his mother was a supporter of truth. They both used to eat food. Look how we have made clear to them the signs and they look how they are deluded. This is only about Jesus. This is not about the Messiah. This is why it says they both used to eat food. This is about the son of Mary, and this is about Jesus. Now we have a repetition. Remember it said that Jesus was going to speak on the day of judgment? So now we have in the future when Jesus is brought before his Lord on the day of judgment. Notice it says, one day will Allah gather the messengers together and ask, what was the response that you received? They will say, we have no knowledge. It is you who know is full that is hidden. And then Allah will say, oh, Jesus, the son of Mary, recount to you, recount my favor to you and to your mother when I strengthen you with the pure soul, the Ruh al -Qudis. This is the soul that was pure. He did speak, speak, speak to people in maturity, in the childhood and maturity. And when I taught you, these are two different individuals. When I taught you the book, 
in the wisdom, in the Torah, in the Injil. And when you made out of clay a figure out of the bird, and it becomes a bird, and you heal the blind and the leper by my permission, and you brought forth from the dead, and I restrained the children of Israel from you. Remember that they said that Jesus was not crucified, but someone took his place. But it says that the Messiah was not killed. And it said that Jesus was taken up, but surely he was not killed. So now we can understand what it is saying because he said, I will make you a messenger unto the children of Israel. But remember, it was said that none of the children of Israel believed in Jesus until his death. So we know that couldn't be the Messiah. So now with the Messiah that cannot be killed, it says that the children of Israel from you, when they did show them, I did restrain them from you. When you did show them the clear signs. Remember it said the entire time, rehearsing to you your signs, rehearsing to you your signs, rehearsing to you your signs. He kept on saying it. The beast is rehearsing to you your signs. Chapter 2, verse 151 is rehearsing to you your signs. Chapter 3, verse 144 is rehearsing to you your signs. Well, actually, that's Muhammad. I apologize. Wrong number. That's next. That's the next page. It said that we restrained him. We restrained because he cannot be killed. We restrained because he cannot be killed. It said that you surely did not kill him. Notice that when we look in Isaiah 53, it says that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was wounded for our iniquity. By his stripes, we are healed. It says in Isaiah 53 and 14 that his visage, we are astonished. His body is corrupted. How would you know that somebody can't be killed other than by a wound? And among them, they say it's nothing but evident magic. And when Jesus, the son of Mary, said children of Israel, remember, it said that I will make him a messenger to the children of Israel. Indeed, I am the messenger of Allah to confirming what came before me of the Torah. He said he confirms what is in the Torah. He doesn't teach it. He doesn't teach Torah. He confirms it. How can he teach Torah if he doesn't have the Quran when the Quran is a criterion over the Torah? How can Jesus teach Torah? It says that he confirms Torah. He doesn't teach Torah. If you look at Messiah, when I taught you the book and wisdom and the Torah, and the Injil, it says that Jesus, the son of Mary, is only confirming what came before him inside of the Torah. And he is coming with the Injil. He doesn't come with the book. And that he was bringing the good tidings. His mother had the good tidings that came from the angel in chapter 3, verse 45. It was the word that came from the angel that was the name of the Messiah. The word in the scripture is Islam. It says the name. I come with the name of the Messiah. Mary came with the name of the Messiah. And then it says that a word was from him in chapter four. And then you see in chapter 61 and six is going to directly say the good tidings. We see the good tidings were, is going to be shown three times. And I made sure to highlight it so you can go back in the see where it said good tidings, good tidings, good tidings. It said it three times. So you understand that we are speaking about the same person. And now we know the name of the Messiah is Ahmed. Is the name of the Messiah Jesus? No. Is the name of the Messiah Muhammad? No. Because this is the name that was given to Mary. This is the name that was given to Mary. Then it was given to Jesus. And he said his name shall be Ahmed. It means the most praised. Because he is not just a messenger. He is the Messiah. Because the Messiah is different than a messenger. Because it says what? Man. Al-Masihu that Jesus, not even Jesus, the son of Mary is not the Messiah, but a messenger. Now, the Messiah is a teacher. The teacher of righteousness is but one. 
It is said that all things were created for the for the sake of the Messiah and that the Messiah is who all of the tribes of the earth will wait for. And Jesus said that the first creation was the soul of the Messiah that set in celestial splendor for 50,000 years before anything else. And notice that they say the same thing. How can it not be the Messiah? They just said that this man is from the other place. He said, when I came to them with clear evidences, they said, this is evident magic. It says that when he performs the miracles inside, in front of the children of Israel, they are going to say that it's evident magic, but their hands will be restrained from him and they can't do anything to him when he performs the miracles, as opposed with Jesus. They thought that they had Jesus and someone was crucified and we made someone to resemble Jesus. These are two different situations. These are two different circumstances. These are two different occurrences. Chapter 61, verse 2, 62 and 2. And now we're going to have it repeated. So just in case you didn't know that the unlettered prophet, the unlettered prophet who is the messenger, who is the Messiah, whose name is Ahmed, was not the same person rehearsing to you your signs, who is the devil to art, who is the creature of the earth. If you did not understand that these were all the same individuals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to mention them all the same. He says, my messenger has come. And then he says, the Messiah has come. And then he says, the unlettered, the unlettered messenger. Notice that he said, it is he who has sent amongst the unlettered a messenger from amongst themselves to rehearse to them his signs, to sanctify them, to instruct them. Not to speak to them, to instruct them. Did Muhammad ever instruct anybody of the book? To instruct them of the book and the wisdom. How are you going to rehearse ayah? You are going to rehearse ayah. Remember the signs is ayah. The Quran is a ayah. The Quran, the Quran Kareem is a ayah. It is a it is a sign in itself. Ayati. That these are the verses of Allah. These are the signs of Allah. These are the revelations of Allah. And that this man is a unlettered messenger who is going to rehearse to you the verses, sanctify you, purify you. Notice that I did the sanctify. This is the, about the third time we said sanctify. We've already said it and instruct you in the book and the wisdom, although you have been in manifest error. Did we not just say that you have been in manifest error and he's teaching you the things that you did not know? So now we know he's unlettered and we know that he's the Messiah and we know his name is Ahmed and we know he's the beast of the earth because we have all those verses saying the same thing. Chapter nine, the Jews say that Ezra is the son of Allah. Notice that Jews is a made up term. Christians is a made up term that they make up this term. It's not real. It's imaginary. The Messiah is the son of Allah. It doesn't say anything about Jesus. It doesn't say anything about a messenger. It doesn't say anything about a prophet. It directly says, and notice that they call him the unlettered messenger. They don't just call him the unlettered prophet. So you know he's a prophet. Don't stop it with a messenger. Don't drop it. And he's going to still going to be a Messiah. You better clock it. What? You heard me. Rewind it. Put it as a ringtone. That it is their statement from their mouths. They said it. They, they said it. This is a statement about the title of Messiah. This is a title of Messiah. Remember that they said that the title of Messiah in itself was the son of God. That their statement from their mouths, they imitate the sayings of those who disbelieved before them. Remember that the Messiah is teaching them things that they did do not. Remember when they did not have knowledge. Remember when they were in manifest error. Remember when they were unlettered. Isaiah 29 says that they will be covered, that the seers, the prophets, all, they will be covered. They will be sealed. They will not have the knowledge any longer. They have taken their scholars. Noted that this is a, this is a whole situation. First situation, we're talking about the Messiah. 
It says, listen, the Messiah is not the son of Allah. It said they have taken their scholars and their monks as lords with Allah, that they are that they listen to their scholars and their monks and they are dealing with their scholars and their monks as though that this is the words of Allah and the Messiah. Comma, the son of Mary. And they that all of these things, they're saying they take these things as lords. All of them. This is a list. And they notice that they don't see you don't see this as a messenger. When you see Jesus's name, you see him designate a messenger. So you're not confused. But when you see title and title, you don't see a messenger after. You've got to pay attention to the details because a lot don't make mistakes. Humans do. It says, fain would they extinguish Allah's light from their mouths. Remember that they are trying to do what? To say things that are lies about the Messiah. So will you extinguish the Messiah in his legacy, in the things that he must do in the sake of Allah? Is he the son of God? Absolutely not. It says that the Messiah will never disdain to be a slave of Allah. He will never, that he will accept this title gladly. Now we have a list of things that are going on. But Allah will not allow that his light should be perfected. Remember it said that the light that is sent down on the unlettered prophet, the messenger whom you find mentioned in your Torah, in your gospel. But Allah will not allow that his light should be perfected even though the unbelievers shall detest it. What? The unbelievers will detest. Remember that they can't kill him. They can't kill him. It is he who sent his messenger with guidance. Remember, it is said with guidance, with guidance, with Hudayya. He coming with Hudayya. The definition of guidance is Arabic is putting a rock in the ocean and you're, you're drowning and you're swimming and you don't got nothing else but the rock. So this rock is Islam and he gives you Islam for you to hold and for you to climb the mountain. That without the Messiah, you will be in darkness because with the Messiah comes the light. And if you do not follow him, if you do not support him, if you do not help him, if you do not believe in him and the light that is set down on him, you will not be of the successful. This is where you have to embody chapter seven, verse 157. He, he tells you what is good. He tells you what is bad. He tells you what you have forbidden for you that has that has been of good. And he forbids what you have made lawful for you that was of bad. Even though the pagans detest it. So he's going against the pagans. He's going against the unbelievers. And he's coming for the believers. They said that the pagans and the unbelievers detest it. Now have come unto you a messenger from amongst yourselves. Again. Now we got it again. Now you know it's chapter 9. Chapter 9. Right on time. What you talking about? Notice that it said, boom, 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 boom. It grieves him that you should perish. Ardently anxious is he over you to the believers is he most kind and merciful. Same message. Now, interestingly enough, there are going to be people that say that Ahmed is Muhammad. So let's go ahead and get the four times that Muhammad's name is going to be mentioned in the Quran so we can understand that he is. What? Let's off the break. Muhammad is no more than a messenger. The Messiah is more than a messenger. And the Messiah's name is Ahmed because these are glad tidings that were given. So notice that these glad tidings are given in chapter three, verse 45 from Mary. And then it said that, that it will be a word from him and a pure soul from God. It was confirmed. And then again in chapter, uh, uh, and then again in chapter five, it's going to say that Jesus is not the Messiah, but he's a messenger. He's of the message. Now it says Muhammad. So we know that Muhammad is nothing but a messenger because the same thing is said about Jesus. Muhammad is no more than a messenger. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. If he died or notice that they said that he cannot die. Did you remember this? That the Messiah cannot die. The Messiah is the one that teaches and the Messiah is higher than a messenger. Will ye then turn back on your heels? 
And did you turn back? And if any did turn back on their heels, not the least of harm will they do to Allah, but Allah will swiftly reward those with gratitude. Muhammad, oh, is not the father of any of your men. So that means he doesn't have any sons. This is what they like to say is Muhammad being the last of the prophets. But ironically, in chapter 33 and 40, it says that he is the seal. He is the cover. He is the top. So that means that once he is covered, everything is in darkness. And the next thing that's coming is the light. This is a more of an allegorical understanding. But also in Isaiah 29, it says that it will be sealed. But it's necessary for the Messiah to be unlearned because he is the teacher. The unlearned one is the one to teach. Because the ones that taught were ignorant. Remember, Allah said that the Jews were like donkeys carrying books. So this is why Allah is going to literally send a creature to speak to them about his verses. It's irony at its best. The messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophet and Allah has knowledge of all things. Notice that they keep on selling you he's a messenger. They're not playing about this messenger. He ain't the Messiah. But those who believe and work deeds of righteousness and believe in what is sent down to Muhammad. For it is the truth from their Lord. He will remove from them their ills and improve their condition. This is his actual name in these verses. Now, interestingly enough, the comparison in chapter 48, verse 20, chapter 48, verse 28, this comparison is going to be very similar to chapter 7, verse 157. So we can see that the unlettered prophet is not Muhammad. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Those who are with him are strong against the unbelievers, compassionate amongst each other. That will see them bow and prostrate themselves, seeking grace from Allah and good pleasure on their faces are the marks, the traces of their prostration. See that? Prostration. This is their similitude in the Torah and their similitude in the gospel. It is like a seed which sends forth its blade, then makes it strong and becomes thick and it stands on its own stem. The sowers from wonder and delight, as a result, it fills the unbelievers with rage at them. Allah has provided those among them who believe and do righteous deeds, forgiveness, and a great reward. Why do we realize that these are two different individuals? Because Remember that in chapter 7, verse 157, it says, follow the unlettered prophet whom you find mentioned in the Torah and the gospel. Unlettered is going to be a reference to what? Him not knowing, therefore him being blind. This is a description of the followers of Muhammad, not to be mistaken with Ahmed. We have a description of the unlettered prophet. And now we have a description of the believers. If this was Muhammad, Allah would have said it in chapter, he would have said it. But he noticely says the unlettered prophet as a different title. Muhammad is known to be as Sadiq, 
trustworthy, not unlettered. So these are the four verses that mention Muhammad. Ahmed's name is mentioned once in the Quran, and they would like to think that Muhammad and Ahmed are the same individual when clearly they are not the same individual because Ahmed is the Messiah who has the glad tidings that were given from Isa ibn Maryam that were originally given to Maryam. We have to pay attention to see that the beast of the earth is the unlettered prophet who is the messenger, who is the Messiah, whose name is Ahmed. We will continue to have videos about the subject. This in, it was intended to be a short video. Clearly, it didn't go that way. Salaam alaikum.